This is Lauren Tannehill with the Choose Clean Water Coalition, a campaign for the Chesapeake and all of its waters. Problems in the bay don't come from the bay. It's not like the oysters have waged war on the blue crabs. You know, it's, it's not like that. The problems come from us. The problems come from uh, the places we shop, and the problems come from the farms from which we buy food, and they come from the streets that we drive and walk and, and pedal on every day. Uh, that's where the movement needs to be. That was Mayor Adam Ortiz of Edmonston, Maryland, describing how working toward a healthier environment with cleaner waters is really about working together for a better local community. The well-being of the community goes hand in hand with protecting the environment for a safer place to live. The so-called tiny corner of the world that is Edmonston, with only about 1,300 residents, sits just outside of Washington, D.C. and bridges across the Anacostia River, which flows into the Potomac and eventually into the Chesapeake Bay. In the past decade, this working class town suffered four floods in four years and many lost everything they had. But the flooding of Edmonston was not only from the Anacostia River, as many may have thought. Edmonston started long ago as a rural town with farms and fields, but like many places, the farms steadily converted to roads and parking lots. These roads and parking lots, along with the homes, stores, and offices they surround, are what are called impervious surfaces, meaning that when it rains, the rainwater cannot be absorbed into the ground, as it would with grass, trees, and other plants. In Edmonston, the accumulation of rainwater from streets and parking lots created devastating floods that destroyed homes. Additionally, the trash and other pollutants were being swept into the river, adding to the Anacostia status as one of the dirtiest rivers in America. Brent Boland, Director of Advocacy for the Anacostia Watershed Society, had this to say. What these folks realize is that, you know, all the flooding in their community when it rained came not from the river itself, but came from all the impervious surface, the pavement, the parking lots, and they said, we can help make that better. We can take ownership of that. A few years ago, the residents of Edmonston decided it was time for change. They envisioned a safer community that could also set an example as a leader in environmental protection. Decatur Street, the road bridging the Anacostia, was described by one resident as the worst street in Maryland. A plan evolved that would redevelop Decatur Street, but not by traditional repaving methods. Edmonston wanted to show that there's a different, more responsible way to rebuild that would not pass pollution problems downstream. They have transformed what was a rundown street into a green street. Adaptations to the street include bike paths that allow water to absorb into the soil through the pavement, wind-powered LED streetlights for energy efficiency and financial benefits, and rain gardens, which are gardens with plants native to the area that will soak up rainwater flowing from the street into the gardens and filter out pollutants in the rain before it reaches the river. Residents work together in green teams to help get the project completed. From the beginning, this process has been a really transparent, open process, and residents have participated from the get-go. They've seen the plans, they've given their reaction. We've incorporated almost all of their ideas into what we see here as the street. Mayor Ortiz has stressed that the work was meant to be environmentally sound, but was largely about community building and connecting the residents of Edmonston. I think if we're going to be successful in the environmental movement, we have to think of our work as community work. It's about reconceptualizing and rebuilding communities. Our streets are much more than just ways for cars to get from one place to another. They're actually the place that we meet as a community, where we bump into our neighbors, that we get places, that we see the world around us. So they're a connection point. They're a place for people to come together. Edmonston resident Bridget Pooley expressed a similar feeling in commenting about the improvements to Decatur Street. I think it will bring a lot of things to the community. It makes it a, a bikeable, a walkable, and therefore a more livable community. Today, Decatur Street stands as an example for every town on what can be done to create a safer and more environmentally responsible community space. So what we've done is we've taken all of our plans and we have them online. So as you're working in your communities, large or small. You can refer people to our website. There's all sorts of plans, documents. So please, you know, take this stuff and steal our ideas. That is our goal for the project.
A key point about the Green Street project in Edmonston is that this working class town with a very small tax base was able to complete it with their regular capital budget. Mayor Ortiz is adamant in conveying, you know, this is an environmental project, but this is a project about building community and building community better. This is nothing fancy. We can call it sustainability. We can call it environmentalism, but really it's just responsibility. It's the stuff that we learned as children that if you make a mess, clean it up. Be responsible for your surroundings. Keep it neat. Keep it nice. And that's all it is. And if our little tiny town can accomplish a project like this, every place can and every place should. I'm Lauren Tannehill with the Choose Clean Water Coalition. For a safer, more connected community, choose clean water.